All right, this is like Christmas. Oliver has gone to get me a surprise. I'm very excited. It sounds like a guitar. It sounds a little bit like a guitar case. I think it's. Okay, can't look. You gotta kind of open it up without. Okay, it's blue. Uh, no, I'm just guessing. Can't look. All right. Close your eyes. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's open down here. Okay. It's very exciting. Okay, it's a guitar. Am I supposed to keep my eyes closed? I gotta look at it. What the? Uh, Would you look at that? Oh man, that's a pretty cool color. Look at the man under these lights. It's got like a purple thing going on there, but I think it's gray, isn't it? But it's not. It's it's different. Well, this is cool. I happen to have a cable here to plug it in. I know exactly what this is, so it's not a secret. But uh, I'm, sh I'm surprised to see it, actually. Well, first thing that I do to check a guitar is I do this. That's a huge selling feature for me, man. Wow. Seriously balanced. That's the first thing I do when I check out any, any instrument. I want to know that I can sit there and not have to worry about it falling off my lap. And usually that translates into it actually sitting really well with a strap as well. Not always, but... Okay, well, I've picked up a couple of these at the store, i got to be honest. Oh, hey, hold on, just two secs. I have a tube screamer on, kind of lower. Wow, this is really cool, Ollie. All right, well, I feel like I'm about to do a review here. I want to do a review. Well, if anybody knows me, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a traditionalist in the, in the Fender sense. So, um, uh, I, I have to say I was really excited... I, I really like John Mayer. It took a while for him to grow on me, um, but uh, I, I got nothing but props for John Mayer. And uh, from these things and understanding the specs on them, the coolest thing about this spec is that it's seven and a quarter inch radius. The fact that PRS or Paul specifically, anybody who was involved in that, uh, was able to agree to that, I think is really admirable. Uh, it's tried, tested, and true, no matter, no matter what anybody wants to say. All of the legends in rock and roll history who played Fender instruments uh, in the early days were using seven and a quarter radius. They were bending the crap out of the strings. David Gilmore, Hendrix, Clapton, Ruby Cannon, Jimmy Bryant. I mean, the list goes on. It's utterly madness how many people have become legends using seven and a quarter inch radius without choking the strings out and all that garbage. Come on. It's all about how you set up the instrument. We know that now. Um, it's been proven time and time again. So. A lot of reverb going on, but you know what? That sounds a little thin to me, a little glassy. Let's have a look at the wiring. Okay, so that's the tone knob. Oh, does it do the wah? Winner. These are a little squeaky. Not that anyone really picks it up, but this one's a little gritty too. I find that one's not moving as fast as I'd like it to. Yeah, they just need a little bit of lube. Lube on the boob. That's center. So when I try out the neck pickup on the S styles, I always go to D. I find that's the quickest way to get into that like tubular round thing that happens on these type of pickups. Um, you know what? These are beautiful instruments. I really can't lie. Um, I like them. I'm going to admit it. I really do like them. I mean, I, I don't see how it's really much different um, than what we're super used to, other than the contour here, which I can tell you, that definitely feels great being able to get there, that access. And it looks pretty great, too. Um, the maple is would be my choice. I do prefer a maple board. 
uh, but they both have their charm, of course. And the carves back here, that's really interesting. That's just an ergonomic thing. I don't know what that's for, really. Just other, just part of the design, I guess. Um, yeah. I, of the other ones I tried, I really like the pickups. They definitely have a good thing going on. Um, you know, even um, from the, uh, the big F label, I find their pickups are not as happening. Uh, these ones, of all the ones I've tried, are great. Um, I'm not a fan of um, non-beveled magnets. This one, they're, they're not beveled. Uh, my fingernails catch on them. <laughs> and I need to file my fingernails down after. <laughs> it's just annoying, that's all. It, it, it does, <laughs> I do catch my fingernails on them. And uh, that's only when I'm doing hybrid picking. So uh, often if I'm in that situation, I'll just avoid doing hybrid picking, right? Or, or finger stall or just move my fingers a little bit. But it's one of those things that I'm always kind of hyper aware about. 24th fret, or uh, 22nd, I mean. Uh, that's a great feature. Um, it does have an angle to it, right? It's not like a traditional type of situation. So that, that always concerns me. If I ever see that, I'm like, you know what? If this thing falls this way, it runs the risk of cracking. Um, or this way. It, either way, uh, the impact can, can hurt it. It's got an interesting carve there, almost like it's oh, a scarf joint. Interesting, so it's not really then one big piece. I wonder how that affects tone. No, it's, uh, I, I noticed it's capped, right? Yeah. It's a maple cap. So I've heard nothing but great things about maple caps. Uh, I only have a couple of guitars that have them. I know Brad Paisley kind of swears by them and a bunch of other people. There's some charm to them. Um, so sure, I, I don't know. I don't want to get into like really getting too crazy about that. Um, once again, people have done many great things without a cap. <laughs> with the skunk stripe, you know, we're real splitting hairs at that point. Um, it's beautiful. Um, I think these things are sticking out just a little bit excessive. Uh, um, not that anyone's going to lose an eyeball or anything, but uh, let's let's check how they how they move. Okay. I like the size of those. They're actually a little bigger beans than uh, than the rest of them. They have a bit of a bit of kind of a pewter kind of yeah. They have a bit of a grip to them. Neat. So that doesn't look like anything special in the saddle department. That is typical. Um, oh, there's no plate in the back. Sure. I never leave a plate, so that actually looks pretty cool. Nicely rounded around the edges. That's just pretty slick, actually. You know, I mean, the PRS is definitely known for fit and finish, man. Uh, everything they do actually looks really pretty. Um, interesting heel joint. I can like that. A little bit of roundedness to it. The black plate, one of one thousand. I'm always fascinated by the like the the personally um, handwritten serial numbers. I know there's a little bunch of numbers on the back there. I guess that's a serial number of sorts. <laughs> Seems suspect, but uh, kind of neat little knobs. They look more like uh, something you'd see on a on an amp or something like that. They're a little bit like that. Uh, pretty. This larger tip is pretty cool. Almost like a telly in a way. Yeah, that's pretty classic. Uh, the fret size as well, I think, is is, is a good choice. It kind of it looks like a 6105, and you know, they kind of a nice, nice polish. The, the the birds are classic now. There's just no two ways about it. And these are interesting because they're not like solid. They're just like little, kind of like little uh, silhouettes or not even silhouettes. But uh, they look like stamps almost. 
It's beautiful. Bone nut, I assume. That's interesting. This thing is actually set in there. Um, the truss rod cover. And I guess you gotta kinda give it a good shake once you've unscrewed it to get it to pop out of there. I don't know. Uh, the pick guard looks right. You know, there's so many times that you see it, the pick guard and just, it's, it's just oddly lined up, even from the big names. It's like, guys, come on. Um, but I like it. It's a really nice weight. Like, I mean, my arm's not sore. That's actually quite, quite light. The fact that I can grab it in the center and actually hold it up that, like that and not have to be, uh, you know, asking for mercy. <laughs> It really plays well. There's no two ways about it. This is a this is a safe, comfortable place for me with a seven and a quarter radius. So it's very homey. Uh, it's a little sticky on the back. Uh, it might be because I'm sweating and I was eating Doritos earlier. But um, no, I wasn't. But <laughs> you know, talking about like uh, it is kind of a satin finish. So uh, they definitely take a while to kind of just absorb some of the natural oils in the hands. And uh, I don't think we're there yet with this one. Uh, it's a little kind of, kind of st starchy feeling, you know. Um, but man, that finish is, is, I'm not gonna lie, that's a beautiful finish. The first thing I noticed under these lights that we have here, that it's cosmic, <laughs> man. Lunar ice. Well, they've never been to the moon, so I don't know how they know what ice looks like on the moon. <laughs> but hey, it's a good guess, or, you know, I want evidence, more clear evidence of ice on the moon. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, it's a winner. Uh, that uh, finish is a winner. I would absolutely love to have a guitar with that on it. And, uh, yeah, um, strap button. Okay, that's interesting. These little details. Uh, that looks like it's a little wider than, than usual, um, which is good and bad in my opinion. These are just funny little details that, uh, you know, a, a guy's been doing this for a while. <sighs> you buy a strap, it's cut. It's cut for a particular diameter usually. And if this is slightly larger than the typical diameter, I can see how that would be great for holding your strap on. but. If you are taking it on and off, which a lot of us, a lot of us will do, um, then you run the risk of wearing out your strap holes. <laughs> What'd you call me? Strap hole. Um, really, and then they become weaker over time because they're usually leather, right? And it just, they get stretched out. So um, I get it, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm suspect of it because uh, there is that other added risk. Uh, and what that does is then develop a situation that if you put your strap on in a weird way, upside down, kind of, you know what I'm talking about, it'll just pop off more easily. Um, but a lot of people say, well, just get strap locks or just get a strap that you're never going to take off the guitar again, which, yeah, it is, that's great. It's good logical thinking. Uh, not, not everyone can do that, and not everyone thinks about that. But it makes good sense. Man, I just can't get over that finish. It's beautiful. And the weight, bang on. Uh, in my experience over the years, that I think it is the lighter guitars that just seem to have a little more charm. Once again, I'm not totally convinced about the angle. I understand why we're doing it here to increase the, you know, the, uh, the tension over the, um, over the nut, the brake angle, and all that stuff. Um, also, I believe these are locking tuners. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, I, I just don't use the whammy bar enough to to be too concerned about it. Um, I've never had a problem with being able to keep my guitars in, in, in pretty decent tune just with normal ones. So, uh, But I, I get it, it might be just like a selling feature for a lot of people, it, it seems, you know, and the whole quick change on stage thing, I, I, I don't always buy that because you don't ever see anybody do quick changes on stage anymore. That's, and it, it doesn't take very long to change a freaking string on a Strat, especially the ones that have the deep thing, you know. It's the same thing, if you're, if you need tools handy and you, if, if you're thinking you've, you've got your little um, Allen key to adjust your whammy bar, then you should have your little clippers handy too, real quick. It'd be one little added quick thing. It's, it's not a super quick procedure, and I don't think that this is really going to be any that much quicker than feeding it through and then tying it down and having the string dangle off for a while. 
Um, I don't break strings anymore. I just don't, so it's not one of these things I ever concern myself with. If it happens, I'm kind of excited, <laughs> especially if it's on stage. And it's, it's exciting for sure. Um, but I usually have a backup guitar just sitting there for those exact reasons. You just, as a professional, you're just like, oh, here we are. I gotta go grab the other guitar and play it for the rest of the set or the rest of the night. Uh, petite patate. Let's hear. That means small potato in French. Yeah, typical thing. It's, it's not crazy though. Um, strat sides or strat sounds, it, it's there for sure. <laughs> The neck shape is great. I, I wish it was the same as it is up here all the way down. It tapers and it just gets a little thinner than I would normally like, but it's beefier than what most people like, so um, I, I would say that it's a really good happy medium. It's comfortable. It's rounded, which is the best part. It's, it is a C shape. I don't feel any of that, that strange shoulder that Tiny creeps in sometimes about there if guys aren't paying attention in the, in the carve or the, or the sanding. Uh, I assume these are done by CNC, I'm only assuming. Um, it's just the tiniest, tiniest, it's not even noticeable. I, I won't even bring it up again. Uh, it's a really nice feeling, and it's got those rounded edges too, which is, uh, I forget what they call that. Rolled edges, yeah. Cool, and flat, that's interesting, which I think is more like a telly, isn't it? Didn't notice that until now. The heel is f straight, like a Telecaster would be. That's interesting. That's very interesting, which means that you can't just toss another strat neck on it. That's fascinating to me. Um, it does look pretty nice there, but it's so shapely to begin with, and then they've got this rounded thing here happening. Anyway, see, there's the theme right there. It's rounded there, but flapped there. I don't know. Design, I honestly, I think they're beautiful instruments. I won't lie. Um, the three aside thing. I don't have a lot of experience with it on this type of guitar, so I would have to put some, some time into it, but I get it, you know, the strings going straight through is a wonderful thing. Uh, strangely, they are going off just slightly, and slight, slight angles, but hardly anything that's noticeable, so. The nut cut looks pretty sweet, and, uh, huh, the little dip is rather quick, it's sudden. It just, goes, just drops off right away, the little ski jump there. Flats on. Yeah, it's a beautiful instrument. I could see how that would age well too. I guess that's a poly, right? <laughs> well, it's pretty glassy, but I know why people get it. Yeah, total winner, honestly. Hey, that's, uh, that's a nice cheat, actually. Um, I'd love to crank it up and get some deep rock sound to see what it, how it handles that. But you know what? It's, uh, it's beautiful. You've got a little bit of plastic. Still got the plastic. Oh, sorry, I won't touch it. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll just re-glue it. Uh, that way it saves, a, saves its value, right? Uh, prints show up, so yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. I, I, honestly, these things, that is the best one I've seen. That's the best finish I've ever seen, actually. Wow, really interesting. Now, there's a, kind of an interesting figure in the, in the top of the guitar here. It like has a kind of a, a speckled pattern that seems really consistent over the entire neck there. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if that's just like unique to this species of maple or the way they've cut it or something like that. I'd be that, it's really, it almost kind of looks like carbon fiber in a way that, it, the way it's speckled. I bet you it's just the just the piece of wood that they they found. Beautiful, really. It's just a. It's an awesome recreation. I'm gonna call it that because it's just a recreation. 
I, I, I can't be convinced uh, that it's not. Um, you know, I, I, I don't see that PRS has really put like an immense amount of their ideas on it. Um, I believe it's still 25 and a half inches. So it is the traditional scale. So that actually deviates from what they're usually doing, as does this radius deviate from what most people are doing these days. Um, it's, uh, it's back to basics, and that's cool. Uh, the deviation is this with the angled headstock, um, uh, maybe some of the cutaway stuff. I don't see that as being a harsh deviation. There's a bit of a ledge here. Small point means nothing. If you know what that means is there's just a little bit of the body sticking out underneath there. It means literally nothing. It's unless you're getting all finicky lack. And uh, it's all around. It's just beautiful. Nice instrument. I love the fact that they have the traditional type of um, backings on these. That definitely keeps it looking a lot more like the originals. Not that you have to. Everything's allowed to change. But I think some, some changes you really got to be careful with because I think it's, it's been aced. They aced it in the first few goes. Has been proven many a time. I've been really getting into the middle pickup these days. There's a Steve Ray Vaughan live show from Austin in like from like 1978 or something, and he almost uses the middle pickup the entire show. It's it's great. It's just a really great tone. I don't know. It's just so quacky and. <laughs> Not that I've spent a lot of time really focusing on, on Jerry's tone, but whenever I try to emulate it, I find that putting it in the middle position is actually the one that really, to me, sounds the closest when you're dealing with these type of guitars. Uh, yeah. It was in tune when you brought it. These are nice on the hand, yeah. So these are micro adjust. Yeah, nice, nice sounding pickups. I, I, I like them a lot. Cool, man. Thanks for sharing. Okay, let's see how it dents. Let's see how it takes dents, okay? You ready? You got 